All right, a special edition of Krantz's Corner. You can see in the video, we have a special guest today here on Krantz's Corner. Lisa Ann is joining us here. We have a big, big event coming to Miami, uh, July 14th through 16th. Exotica is coming back here to Miami. Lisa Ann's going to talk about that. But I've got a million things I want to talk about Lisa Ann with. She knows I'm a fantasy football guy. She loves fantasy football. She is, I mean, books out, all kinds of stuff. First off, Lisa Ann, welcome to Krantz's Corner. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and to always meet a fellow fantasy football enthusiast. We are a unique breed of people. It is the game inside the game. And also it's like emotional cutting each week because <laughs> what you do is you overanalyze your lineups and then you watch the game and a player that you put on the bench just so happens to have the biggest play of the first six minutes of the game. And it's like a gut punch. And then you sit there and sulk. It's, it's so, so great. <laughs> Lisa, you just literally summed up everyone's Sunday, except for the other half of the people that are playing against you that are going, yep, he's got him on the bench. Yeah, no, no point for him. Oh, that is incredible. So how did you get into like fantasy sports, fantasy? I know that you like fantasy baseball, fantasy football. You've done shows on serious. I mean, like, how did you get into it? So and so heavy. How did that, how that happen? So in 2013, I was still living full-time in Los Angeles, and I had the opportunity to come to New York and meet Matt Deutsch from SiriusXM, who was looking for a female voice to cover fantasy sports. They had a fantasy football show that was Playboy Playmates. The show had just broken up, and he wanted to prepare for the upcoming season. So I fly here in May of 2013. I meet with Matt. I'm a huge sports enthusiast, but at the time I knew nothing about fantasy sports. What I did know was that all of my friends played and that if I reached out to my people one at a time and said, hey, I have this opportunity to talk fantasy sports, can you teach me the game? I spent that entire summer I read every book on the history of fantasy sports, which I found fascinating that people played this before the internet, before right. fax machines, when they had to mail each other data to see who, they had to do their own scorekeeping. Nobody would do that today. And so September 9th, 2013 was my very first show, Lisa Ann Does Fantasy on Sirius XM. I was there for seven years. And in that time, you know, Sirius provided me with broadcast classes, the people in the fantasy sports community all gave me ad access to their websites where they give you all the best information, you know, injury updates, all of that. And I just dove in. I knew that my fan base from traveling along the road for over 30, almost 30 years, I always went into sports radio shows, of course, to promote my club events. Right. And a lot of times they would keep me longer because I would just start talking sports with them. I also made sure that I saw almost all the ballparks and arenas when I was traveling on the road. I would kind of isolate my schedule and say, hey, I want to be in Pittsburgh at this time because so I can get a hockey game in right. and a football game. Or I could hit PNC Park, which is still my favorite baseball stadium. So it was very easy for me to follow the sports. Now, football, cake, okay, easy one to learn. I then leaned into fantasy baseball because that's what keeps you on air all year right. is covering baseball. Now I've kind of leaned out. My first year I did horrible. My second year in a big league with all hosts from the network did a really good. I finished in second place. Wow. And so I told my boss at that point, I'm going strict DFS. I will not play another season long fantasy baseball league because I'm never going to finish above second place. And one thing I learned from George Costanza on Seinfeld is you leave on a high note. Right, right. That's great words. Great advice from George uh, at that point there. That's awesome. Fantasy sports have just taken over. It's such a big, big business around here. That is, uh, that's unbelievable that you got into it so much. How much do you like doing uh, radio shows? I know you fill in and you were filling in for years and you were doing stuff for years. How much did you like doing radio and how, because I've been a radio nerd for about 20 years. I got out of college. I interned at 560 QM here in Miami, and I have been there since 20 years of radio. I love radio. I'm a radio nerd. How much did you like it after the first time you started doing it? I loved it. And I've always been a listener. So as an avid listener, where you listen to so many shows that you know exactly what time it is during the day because of right. what show you're switching to, I fell into like the community aspect on Fridays during the fantasy football season, I do about 10 guest spots in remote areas all over the US and I've become bonded in with their communities. I go back to some of these places to do their charity events once a year. And what I find is we all have that common thing. Listening to a drive show, whether it's traffic in the morning or traffic at night, you lean in so hard, you get to know the, the host, their family, what's going on with them, but it's an escape 
from overthinking. Right. You're already stuck in that traffic or you're already doing laundry, whatever chores you listen to radio to. And I just found it can bring you so much joy. I like it more than I like watching sports shows. I love listening. I just love the whole imagination of what you know is going on. I even love listening to play-by-play games. Wow. Baseball is the best. Basketball is the second best. But sometimes I'll have a game on and it's crazy because you have to pause the game and get caught up to the delay because the radio has a two to three minutes delay. but there's some radio hosts that can just build you the most beautiful beautiful picture and i just love the communication aspect the reaching out to the unknown you know from a studio or whether you're doing the show from home but radio brings me so much joy i love it as much if not more than when i very first started and i probably listen to at least eight hours of sport sports radio a day wow. you know and i have my i start my day every day with greeny you know i go to get up but then once greeny moves over to his own channel get up and Stephen a comes on i'm like okay Stephen a at 10 in the morning is too much for me <laughs> i switch to greedy again he's a great host and it's yeah. it's also studying the art knowing how to do a good read, knowing how to remind everybody who you're speaking with when it comes to a guest, because people have just gotten in their car. They've turned you on. They don't know who you're talking to. And so the cadence of it all, I love the science of getting behind it and just being the best I can be doing it. Uh, you could be a program director for about 80 stations around the country, the way you just <laughs> explained all that all right there. Lisa Ann joining us here on Crancis Corner. <clears throat> what was the transition like for you from stage one of your you know in the old uh, adult entertainment business to to where you are now you wrote books you I, I know that you're doing radio stuff how was that transition for you personally going from being in the adult industry to where you are now I would say it would have been a lot more difficult if I didn't find my love at Sirius XM because everyone there treated me so well. We had mentioned that, you know, Evan Cohen from the right. morning men, yep. you know, I did their show in the mornings for a couple of years. I was their stand in when they were on vacations and just the way everyone in the building embraced me as, Hey, this is cool. You know, you're doing something else with your life. Nobody looked at anything I did with judgment, right. but everybody was really excited to watch me grow. It could have been vastly different if I didn't make that great connection at Sirius XM. So I'm right. incredibly grateful. And it means a lot to me to still go in there and visit the guys on the morning men and still keep tabs and still listen and be a caller sometimes because I know that they really help build that bridge. Now I get to enjoy a little bit of the best life. You know, I'm coming to Miami for Exotica. I do all four Exotica shows now every year. And so I get to do the like fringe activities where I still meet my fans and still celebrate a life that I lived for so long. And what's cool now is my fans talk to me about my podcast, the Lisa right. Ann experience. They talk to me about if it's fantasy football season, like in November when we do <laughs> Jersey, the guys just hand me their phone and have me go through the waiver wire for them. And I'm like, <laughs> fix my lineup. Right. right. More joy than <laughs> that. And it's cool because you know what? We met one way and, and there's nothing wrong with anything I've done in the past. Right. The fact that I've been able to carry this fan base over into fantasy sports, into sports betting, they'll talk to me about my books. They'll talk to me about my podcast. And so I realized like, a lot of the people that watched me when I was in the industry have also grown and their lives have changed. Right. Maybe they got married, they had kids, they did this. And they think it's so cool to be able to keep tabs with me as I am now. And I also think everybody wants to know that the people that are in the industry end up with a good life afterwards, right? We want to know that you weren't harmed, that right. you're not broken, and that you could be successful and that they could feel not guilty about the love that they've had for you in the past and now celebrate you in the future. And so Exotica really, really does that for me. And it's a great time for me to just like stop and chat with everybody and, right. you know, promote I'm doing a month of best ball drafts right now. So I'm doing a best ball draft every single day for a wow. month on fan tracks. I'm live streaming them on YouTube. So I'm like one computer here in the draft room, my YouTube people here, some of them <laughs> were in the draft room with me. They're telling me I ganked their pick. I'm telling them it, it's a great exercise for right. mock drafting. It's also a great way for me. It's so repetitive that I'm reminded of what players made moves before, you know, before the draft, who was drafted pronunciation of names, right. you know, like all of those things doing this for 30 days. My friends are like, it's crazy. It's summer. Why are you doing this? I'm like, because if I do this now, by the time July hits, when I start doing a ton of of fantasy football draft orders on Cameo. So I've become the person that everybody gets 
to pull their draft order. And I put their names inside my fleshlight. So I take the contents <laughs> of the fleshlight out and I do this whole bit where I'm shaking them up, telling them oh. to inside me, you know, and then I pull them out one at a time and I give them some rankings. And so this is just a way for me to always be exercising my mind. And I think, you know, we know now so many things about our later years, the more new things you learn every single year, the healthier you could be for longer. So the fact that I get to go back and balance into my past at Exotica and, and, and get, get to play dress up, because, you know, radio, I'm wearing a tank top and jeans every right. day. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. <laughs> so it's fun to still get to put on some fancy clothes and take fun photos. And then it's fun to come back and be like, all right, I got a draft. Right. That's, I mean, that is that is incredible. What, so I got to ask you, that, I, I want you to paint the picture for the person out there listening that's going to go to Exotica for the first time this year uh, here in Miami. What are they going to run into? What's going to happen in Exotica? What are they going to see in Exotica? So the dates for Exotica are July 14th, 15th, and 16th. And the first thing you need to know that Friday nights, ladies get in free. So we see a ton of couples. We see a ton of groups of women coming in and just enjoying themselves looking around. Exotica has everything from the stars, all your favorite stars, signing autographs and taking photos with you at their booths to sex educators in the conference room. I do a live book reading every Sunday from one or the other of my books, my first book, The Life, my second book, The Life Back. Uh, there's so many things you can buy, toys, there's snacks. It's really just an experience, right? And I love to see people do it for their first time. And I'm like, how did you like, like, what do you think? And they're like, oh my gosh, there's so much to see. There's so much to learn. We're in a place right now in the United States where only 22 states offer sexual education. People are having to outsource. Where do you go to get this kind of education? You can go to Exotica, whether you're single, whether you're a couple, you go and you get to listen to some of the most brilliant minds as sex educators, helping you understand different things about your sexuality. And, you know, it's always been incredibly inclusive. Exotica was ahead of the game when it came to being inclusive. And that's always made everyone really fall in love more when they go to see that not everybody looks the same, that everybody of all safe, shy, sizes, races, everybody is there and we're right. all just being ourselves. So there's something to be celebrated in that for guys who like to collect autographs or maybe already purchased something online and want to get it signed. They bring it into us. But Exotica has something for everybody. And what I like the most about standing back and being the person that's kind of looking through the window is watching people walk around and just their curiosity is constantly right. peaking. And there's something so beautiful in that to just know that you're expanding your mind. Hey, you may like something, you may not like something, but no matter what, you're experiencing it firsthand at Exotica. Yeah, that is, that's a great way to, to kind of push Exotica. I'm excited to have it down here. I love the fact that it comes to Miami. Uh, it's a big event down here. How much has uh, how much has the business changed with the internet over the last 15, 10, 15 years? Like, I, I mean, I'm not saying going back to, you know, in the, in the early 80s when you had to get a VHS cassette and you had to go to the back of the hey, video store. Early but, 90s right here. I was at those video stores right, signing. Right, like, and they, they had to go through the weird beads to get back to the adult <laughs> section. Like, And I used to always say, why do people rent these? That's so unsanitary. Like, right. oh my gosh, you know, that kind of a thing. What's changed the most in the current times, as you all know, uh, Miami is now the largest city of OnlyFans creators in the United States. So, you know, you've been named the hub. Uh, but, you know, OnlyFans has put the power back in the performer's hands and it's allowed them to create their own content and then decide who they want to work with to increase their brand. And so they're still working on sets for larger companies, but from the talent that I still keep close touch with, what's been cool is them saying to me like, I'm not going to work for people that didn't make me feel comfortable, or I'm not going to do jobs I don't want to do just because that's how I make money. Right. And so that power is one thing, but the layer that I remind them all about is now that you're managing content and you're working with a scheduler and you're handling your customers, you will now be set to be able to be in any customer service based business, maybe own your own storefront. There's so many things that you're learning just to survive on OnlyFans that you may not realize people go to college for these things right. and you're learning them firsthand as a paid education while you're only on your only fans. So I love that it's made everybody step up in a sense to be more professional and it's presented a challenge to the companies out there to also treat the talent much better. How much fun do you have when you hear that you've been mentioned in a rap song or a, 
Showtime series, Billy, something like that. How much how, do you smile? You smirk and like kind of go, wow, that's that's pretty cool that that happened. That I'm in a rap song or someone's mentioning me here in a show that maybe I didn't know that it was there. All of a sudden, someone called you and said, "Did you hear that?" Like, how much fun do you have, and, and how much does that make you happy? So I was such a fan of Billions from the jump, right? <laughs> right? And on the first episode where they mentioned my name, now I know Dan Soder because Dan Soder for years had a show on Comedy Central on Sirius XM. So right away I reached out to Dan. I'm like, Dan, they're saying my name. I've got to be able to get on this show. So now I start tweeting with everybody and I start getting involved. The next thing you know, three years later, they reach out. They're like, okay, we've got a cameo for you. Right. You're going to be on the show as yourself. And I was like, and I, I didn't, I only told like three of my friends. We shot it in December of 2019, uh, 2018. It was going to come out in April, 2019. So I had to keep my mouth shut. I was Months. at a draft event in Nashville the day before it was coming out. And then that night it was coming out. And the next day everybody was like, how could you have been with us yesterday and not told us? I'm like, but learning to keep a secret like that is right. so great for your branding. And also you you sign an NDA. You're not supposed to talk about what you right. do. Of course. But of I course. will say this, being <clears throat> in an Eminem video was by far the most life-changing experience. Cause I always tell my friends like, look, when I'm 90 years old, I am still going to be able to look back at this music video and say, I was really cool back then. <laughs> really, really cool. That is awesome. Your story is amazing. Uh, going from one industry to another one and still writing books and all this, like you're, you're doing so much. A lot of people want to get out of the limelight or, or don't want to be, they want to be in a private sector at that point. I love the fact that you tell your story, you're writing books, you're doing radio, you're in a whole nother business now of fantasy sports. Like Lisa, you're doing it. Congratulations. You're doing it. I appreciate that. And I just want to be a really solid pace car for not only the performers of the industry, but also the family members of performers in the industry. I've become the person where talent will tell me, like, I told my parents, look at Lisa Ann, she's fine. And she was in the business. And I'm like, so I have this, I have to stand up and I don't want to hide from my past. Right. I want to be proud of my past because it laid the foundation for me to do radio because, you know, none of us are getting rich doing radio. No, so having no. a little bit of money in the bank allows me to do a lot of radio, you know? Um, and I just really think it's important for us to be able to be present and let the world know that we're not all broken toys and that we can get out with some financial wellness that will allow us to take the job we really want with the next leg of our lives. Lisa, this has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Great conversation. The fact that we talk fantasy sports, you know me, I told you Zach in the nose, and we are definitely going to get you on an episode of Zach in the nose. That is for sure uh, going to happen at this point, July 14th through 16th down here in Miami. Ex By the way, exoticaexpo.com is the website. You can go there, get all the tickets, all your information, see where all of them are all over the country. By the way, you said there's four of them. Is that what it is around the country? There's four. We do Chicago, Miami, New Jersey, and DC. So you can go to any of those, come down here to Miami. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You'll be able to see Lisa Ann and all the other performers down there. It is at the Miami Airport Convention Center, like I said, July 14th through 16th. Lisa Ann is my guest here in Crancis Corner. Lisa, thank you for the time. It was awesome talking to you. I'm glad we got the information out there. Your story is fantastic, like I said. Uh, and I'm excited to meet you. If I'm, in, if, if I'm in town and I'm not on babysitter duty that weekend, I'm 100% there and I'm going to come see you. I can't wait for that, as well as to meet all of my fans at Exotica. And I also cannot wait to visit your show during the fantasy football season and talk about who is breaking our heart and who is making our day. You just made my day. You made the noses day. When I tell him, he's going to be really excited at that point also. Lisa, like I said, thank you again for the time, July 14th through 16th at the Miami Airport Convention Center, Exotica coming to Dade County. Lisa, thanks for your time. And we are going to bug you again. Sounds good. I'll be looking forward to it. All right. This has been a special edition of Crancis Corner with the great Lisa Ann.